Gates Foundation. What do you do here? Uh, so my title is Manager of Innovation and Learning Technologies. Yeah, what do you do here? Same question. <laughs> so I manage uh, a lot of the e-learning that happens here at the foundation, videos, um, anything that's online, and we're utilizing technology to further education, uh, either here in the foundation, and sometimes we work, through, work with grantees and partners to help them understand that, that whole ecosystem out there that's learning. Case scenario? Case scenario. Like, what do you, what do, you do? So I so, understand yeah. some of the topics. Give us a little, a little nibble, a little... Little view right. of what's okay. going on. All right, good. So, for example, Global Health would come to me and they'd say, Darren, we really need help on education, edu educating people, <laughs> edu education, right? um, educating people on quantitative pharmacology. That is a mouthful. Yeah, it is right. Yeah. And and I know you know a lot about it. Yes, of but course I most do. people don't. So we would then work with their subject matter experts or SMEs, and we would ask them the basic questions of how do you know what do you think about quantitative pharmacology? We would help them with a outline, a script, all of that stuff put together. Then we work with a vendor, put all that stuff together with graphics and visuals, maybe some video and stuff like that. Hone that into a bite-sized module that people can then start learning from and host that into our uh, onto our internet so you so take those, something boring really long words <laughs> with a bunch of syllables and then make it colorful and like a quick little fun informational yeah, yeah pretty much i think that there are some people in global health that would say that they're Quantitative pharmacology is very interesting. But, yes, of course. Excuse me. But for the other 99% of us, yes, it makes it a little bit more engaging. Okay. So what do you see as the future of learning? I think that the future of learning is going to encompass many different uh, things. And, and there's a couple things, though, that I would highlight. Is One is that the workforce is changing. So if you look at the statistics, by 2020, uh, almost 50% of the workforce in the United States will be millennials. By 2030, that number goes up to 75%. So over the next five to 10 years, 15 years, we have to really start thinking differently about our audiences and how they want to learn. And it's not just how they want to learn. How do they want to collaborate? How do they listen? How do they actively engage in the work that they do? So learning is a big part of that, and so, uh, and so is technology. So a lot of millennials that you know today are texting, they're on Instagram, they're on Google, um, they're looking up information, stuff like that. So our mindset as, as um, learning practitioners has to be able to bridge those gaps. So we still need to have some of the traditional approaches to learning, um, but also we need to be able to get them, uh, get information out to them, learning out to them uh, as, as rapidly as possible because we can't, we can't develop in three month or six month increments anymore. We literally need to get things out in the next two or three weeks, if that, uh, before they become uh, antiquated and, and they start searching for new information. So it's, it's a big shift in the way we think about learning today. Um, and I think that's something that we all need to, to think about for the future. So not only think about it, what are you doing to kind of get ready for that and to start thinking about the future of learning? Are you preparing yeah, yeah, I think we are. I think there's a lot of people out there um, that are looking at these trends. So some of the things that, you know, we want to look at are, are further out. Yeah. So if you look at um, virtual reality, so if you look at the HoloLens and the Oculus Rift, those things are not quite ready for prime time, so to speak, in the learning world because it would be rather costly to develop programs around those. So while I want to keep an eye on those, I do think it's a little bit farther out. Now, augmented reality, on the other hand, there's several apps out there now that you can actually uh, do some augmented reality for. So in the next couple years, the price has really started to come down on those things in the development of those yeah. kinds of apps. So could we use those in that learning space? And the answer is yes. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're on a factory floor or whether you want to do simulations. Those kinds of things are things that we could be doing today that right now it's in the consumer kind of model where mm -hmm. uh, apps are selling for a price and, you know, maybe they're game related or maybe they're, you know, for a product or service. We just need to bring those into organizations and develop them for our new audiences. That is exciting. So mm -hmm. in terms of are you leading a movement here that direction or just want people to think about it i think we definitely want people to do more than think about it okay i think that um there's several of us that you know in this industry that um really think that we're at this tipping point mm -hmm. where we can see we can, we can see <laughs> over that the mountain just you know yeah. just a, just a little bit more and then then it's um it's but it's also 
bringing people along with this, right? Yeah. So while I love the technology and I love, you know, relating that to people, not everybody's comfortable in that same space. So how do I bring along people? So I, that's, that's kind of my goal is, you know, whether you call it a movement or, or an evolution or a revolution, I think it's, it's incumbent on me as a learning professional and, um, uh, and wanting to give back is to help people along that path. So follow this guy. We need a song. You know, we need a song to go with it. Okay, what song? Dara Nerlin. I don't know. I think somebody's <laughs> going to create it. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Trying to make sure he feels useful. <laughs> it's good. We try it. We try it every day. We try it every day. Okay. Song. That's ridiculous.